Hello and welcome back to the Scalebone Cafe and welcome to part three of the Edward 48 Scale 109 G14AS. <gasps> oh, it's a mouthful, isn't it? Right, so this episode is going to be the construction and straight away here I am adding the resin exhausts. These are the brass in replacements. They are superior, I think, to the plastic ones and well worth the investment. They are uh, quite deep compared to the plastic ones and uh, they fit really nicely it also comes with photo wetch the kind of sort of heat shield baffles whatever you want to call them they uh, they slot in quite nicely and the one at the top that needs bending and that's actually quite awkward but uh, yeah managed it in the end but it's quite nice actually it's quite rustic if you like um, you've got the little bends in it well, I think this is quite poor design actually. This is the tail wheel and it needs adding now. And yes, I snapped it off. Nightmare. Fuselage is going together now. The cockpit's already been glued in place on the right hand fuselage half. And I'm just spreading the ammo black super glue down the uh, sort of rear fuselage here. Now, uh, this is my sort of go-to technique at the moment. Um, I'm a big fan of the old black super glue. It means you can sand it straight away. It doesn't shrink, so no go seams. But really, the uh, the reason why I used it here is there is actually a seam on the real thing that runs top and bottom along the sort of the actual seam there. It's uh, quite prototypical how this is designed and. Trying to scribe in there if the plastic is a little bit soft, uh, I thought might be a bit of a nightmare. So, decided to use the super glue, and uh, it means that once here you can put the accelerator on, you can just uh, get in there and start sanding straight away. I noticed there was a little bit of a gap at the front here, so I just added a little bit more of the super glue and just ran it down. Just the bit at the back is bit belt and braces really. They're just hitting it with the accelerator. And pretty much straight away, well, well not pretty much straight away, straight away we can go in and sand the seam. Just this blue sanding sponge here from Flory Models, that's just, uh, that's just polishing out the scratches really. And now to restore the panel lines that sort of go across. This is my go-to. If you've seen any of my videos before, you'll know that I use this little tool from Arbery Productions all the time. It's like a little saw, but uh, you can't go too deep with it. So it's ideal for panel lines. And then just going in there with the Tamiya Scriber just to uh, make sure that the panel lines are the same depth as the ones in the kit. All that has a neat little polish and you can use the dust there just to uh, just to see uh, check your work and then an old toothbrush just to remove any of the uh, powder and then just running a little bit of cement over there which uh, just gets rid of any rough edges any burrs any of the stubborn dust and makes everything look like plastic now for the scribing, I use Dymo tape and I actually stick it to some masking tape and that way it, uh, it keeps its stick for far longer than normal. And once in place, it's just a simple job of running the scriber down. Just, uh, I'm not putting any weight on the scriber at all, just letting the weight of the tool do the work. And uh, just a couple of passes is all that's needed and then running the cement down and uh, that looks like it all the other panel lines just this sort of spinner mount plate thing that just pops in the front and you can see the little raised bit there uh, around the hole and that just pushes the spinner away just exactly the right amount to get the tiny little gap these are the little mounts for the uh, for the guns. 
on the inside of the cowl. And then that just pops in the top there. The fit is really good. Now on the, uh, the sort of earlier 109s, there is no panel line where that join is. And I nearly did what I normally do with my 109 kits and then fill that seam and completely eliminate it. But looking at some of the pictures and quite a lot of the plans, I'm pretty convinced that that is an actual panel line on this, uh, on this later model. This is the uh, intake on the left hand side, supercharger intake. Just added a bit of stretch sprue because there is actually a weld seam that goes down there. It's quite prominent. So I just added that from, uh, as I said, thin stretch sprue. That just pops on this little mounting jobby. And then we can um, pop that onto the fuselage. Now in hindsight, I wish I'd painted the inside of the, uh, of the intake. It was a bit of a pain actually to, uh, to sort that out afterwards. And just trying to trying to blend in that weld seam from the stretch brew, just using the tweezers to push it down and make it look like a weld seam. You can see the bit sticking out at the front, and I'll just trim that with a scalpel blade. On the front, you need to sort of bend that round and hold it in place, just so it it uh, it conforms to that very tight radius right at the very front. And then just using the back of the scalpel blade means that there'll be no fingerprints. That just pops in, fits really neat. The piano hinge at the top is a separate part, which I quite like. So that pops in. Uh, it's really quite difficult to clean up though that bit. So just be very careful. It's uh, It'll be really easy to snap. I actually got away with it on this one. And again, just using the tweezers to push it down to avoid the dreaded fingerprints. Two part tail planes. This is the uh, Tamiya sort of thicker glue. And they fit together really nicely. It's almost no join. I mean, it's so thin at the front, but uh, when that is dry, it's, uh, I mean, it almost doesn't need sanding. Really quite impressive. Read the instructions carefully. There's lots of different fin options. Lots of different rudder options. So I'm hoping I got this right. And then that is a simple sort of tongue and groove join. And we'll just add a little bit of liquid cement just to seal it in. Now I did use a bit of Mr. Surfacer here just to um, you know blend it in really not to eliminate the gap completely but just to sort of tidy things up that's all it needed so when it was dry just went in with a cotton bud just moistened with some mr hobby thinner and i just uh, rubbed it uh, rubbed away the excess now i've learned to my cost don't use the rapid thinner that is really quite aggressive and that will attack the plastic. It's almost like neat lacquer thinner. And I've done that before by mistake as well. Use the lacquer thinner and that will attack the plastic. So um, the regular stuff is absolutely perfect. Tail planes just pop into place. And again, the fit was really good here, but I always do it really is just sealed it in with a bit of the Mr. Surfacer treatment. 
Now alignment is key here, so I'm always checking. Some people make jigs, I can't be bothered. I just use a bit of seaman's eye as we used to say in the Navy. Just moving it down so you can see. The elevators, so they got this little sort of pin that uh, goes into the uh, into the fin there, and uh, it actually fits really quite snug. So um, poseable. So I did them slightly drooped just to add a little bit of interest. If you're going to do that though, make sure you do clean up all the exposed inner seams. And then the rudder just clicks in. There's multiple rudders, so again, do your research, make sure you get the correct one. I actually had to modify the one uh, I, uh, I needed, just got rid of the trim tabs at the back. Right, the wing's quite a complicated affair actually, lots of parts, lots of detail. So uh, first up was uh, those sort of inner parts and then the outer part of the wheel well is modular. But it all fits really nicely. These were pre-painted. And it's just a question of working around. Now, um, I advise you to work quite quickly here. Um, so the glue stays soft and then you can sort of manipulate it all into the right place. The wings, just a smear of extra thin, just on the wingtip joint. And then there's not actually too much exposed, um, exposed seam really. It's, uh, it's mainly just the sort of inner leading edge inboard of the slat. Just be careful when applying the glue because if you're not careful, if you miss, if it runs over the surface and uh, and you end up touching it or squeezing it, you're going to have a repair job. So just, uh, yeah, just be very careful, especially because you need to put the pressure quite near the front. Now, when that's all taken care of, it's a simple job just to clip the wings into place again. The fit is really good. You'll see the uh, um, there's the clamp there, closed peg. That's what I'm looking for, because the uh, the fuselage was a little bit too wide for the rear plate in the cockpit. And we can leave that to dry. Right, a little bit of filler. So this is the Mr. Hobby epoxy stuff. And what I do is I twist it like this, because that makes it um, really quite quick. And then I smeared it all over the join at the back, because that's not a panel line where the join is. So there shouldn't be anything there. So this epoxy putty is brilliant, because it doesn't shrink and uh, it scribes just like plastic. And more unnecessary belt and braces really. Mr. Surfacer just brushed over the seams. There were no gaps. It just helps just to smooth everything out. Same at the tailplane look. And along the leading edge. But along the leading edge, that was actually sanded rather than using the old uh, cotton bud method of removal. Talking of cotton bud removal. So again, just give it a quick rub and uh, yeah, the excess just comes away and it's uh, a really good technique. I almost said then, 
What did we do before that? Well, what we did before that is use Tipex and water. Those of you remember doing that. But it's so simple, so quick. Now for the control services. So, uh, ailerons, flaps, they all just click into place. So I didn't pose the ailerons. You don't tend to see ailerons deflected on the ground on 109s. Uh, and then the slats going on. You could leave these off till after painting. But uh, I tend to find that if I do that, then the uh, the glue never seems to bond as well, and I always tend to knock them off. The uh, the actual gluing surfaces are quite small, so by gluing it now, it's uh, it's a lot stronger. And then I'll just go and mask the RLMO2 bits if required. So here's the canopy. It's uh, had its various photo etched little bits done, and it's been masked on the inside and sprayed. And then I tend to leave the masks on there because it just helps protect from sort of the paint. When you're putting the paint down, it can blow into the uh, inside there, just sort of the almost like dust particles and you end up having to clean the inside, which can be a bit awkward. But again, the fit's really good. And actually, if you if you look at the real thing, I think the models fit better than the real aeroplane at times because by this stage of the war they were just being thrown together at speed and the quality control wasn't there that's really evident when you look at the uh, FW 190 at the Cosford Museum I mean it really is rough right I said earlier that this filler stuff scribes just like plastic so it's a simple job just to put that panel line in. But then what you have to do is extend the uh, just extend the rear fuselage seam and also the one on the belly panel. You'll have to extend that panel line back as well. Obviously restoring that because uh, you kind of sanded it away. And this panel line is off center. Edward got it right. You look at pretty much every plan. I know you've got to be careful when looking, referring to scale plans, but uh, they all have this off center. No idea why. Just how it's designed, I guess. Just using this MDC punch there's some sort of big round rivets there that um, uh, need restoring and extending all the way to the panel line. And then the kind of standard rivet, so obviously these are all uh, destroyed by sanding. So just using a rosy tool. I have got the Galaxy tool, but um, I just had the, uh, I opened the drawer and the rosy one was saying, in fact, no, this is the Galaxy one. What am I talking about? Um, yeah, this is the Galaxy tool. I thought I used the rosy on this one. There's my, my memory playing up. But they're just as good. In fact, arguably, they're better because the, uh, the head's interchangeable. What I tend to do is um, put the rivet wheel and kind of move it around gently and hunt around until I feel a tooth goes into one of the existing rivets. Then I know I'm in the right place and I know it's not gonna look a bit daft with the rivet spacing. Right, this is a bit of a nerve wracking job doing this freehand down either side of the seam to make sure I've got it straight but it worked, thank goodness.
oil cooler under the nose again loads of different parts on the sprue so follow the instructions carefully I did have some spare photo which I could have used but um, just decided to paint it black and give it a bit of a dry brush with uh, a, um, sorry ammo aluminium fluffing the lines that comes up really nicely and then that just plonks in place in hindsight I should have stuffed a bit of uh, sponge in there to mask it off because I did get some overspray down there okay it's really coming together now now for the radiators again I could have used the f some spare photo etch but uh, to be honest you they're so they're so thin and narrow you can't really see it so I didn't bother the covers just click on uh, just over the top everything fits brilliantly Okay, now for the uh, the radiator flaps. These are really fiddly, actually, and there's no great solution for uh, kit designers of these. The gluing surface is always quite small. I guess the best way is how Edward did it in the S199 in 70 second scale and how their new kits are going to be done. They're actually molded integrally with part of the wing and you just bend them down i think that's a much better solution and be interesting to see if they go down that route with the 48th k4 which is coming in december i really do hope so So with the top one in place, we can put the bottom one in place, add a smear of extra thin, and then just pinch them together. And then just hope that they end up drying in the right place. And then lastly, the outboard flaps go on. They just click into place. Didn't really need any glue for these, but you know, belt and braces. And there we are, the airframe is pretty much done. So I mentioned earlier that I ended up removing the trim tabs on the rudder. Just looking at some of the photographs of some of the, I'm um, not modeling an actual airplane here. I'm doing one from a particular unit. Um, so, uh, yeah, I just copied sort of some of the photos, the ones of the other ones that I saw in the unit, actually. And there is the airframe complete. So thank you very much for watching. That's part three. And in part four, I get busy with some pigments for the wheels. Do a bit of mottling which I haven't done for a very long time. It's very satisfying. And have great fun with the weathering. That's all coming up in the next part. So um, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you then. Bye bye.